Hey y'all. Uh, so as you can see from the title, today I'm gonna be donating some plasma. And I'm actually kind of nervous because I never did it before. And at the same time, I'm kind of um, grateful. Uh, I'll try to record inside, but if they don't let me, then I'm gonna try to sneak in there and record. <laughs> Hopefully nobody watches me. <laughs> so let's go. Have you ever been here before? No. Or ever done it anywhere else before? No. Okay. Not even blood. Alright. Alright, banana. First thing you want to do, when did you last eat? Uh, like an hour ago. What'd you have? A banana. And I have, a, no, I have an orange with me. Okay. You're going to have to eat something more substantial to eat. Because you want to have something on your stomach. A banana and apple is not quite enough. You want to have the carbs and the proteins and stuff in your stomach. So, if you want to, what we can do, well, first thing we got to do is check your veins and then there's some paperwork. We can have you fill that out, but you'll have to go get something to eat. If you want to, the, the subway here or something, if you want to grab it and bring it back here and eat while you're going through the process, that's fine. But you're going to have to eat something because that's not quite enough, okay? Do you want to do that? Uh, yeah, I ate a big meal last night. Yeah, no, it needs to be within like, within like an hour we want you to have eaten because it takes two to four hours to get through the process. Okay. And if you're back down on an empty stomach, you're much more All right, and then we have a okay. video. Okay, so you're going to be able to get something to eat? So let me get that Yeah. Pain. Okay, cool. Go ahead and have a seat, boss. We'll hold on to this for a minute. I'm going to get somebody to check your veins and then we'll get rolling from there, okay? Okay, oh, thank you. you. Hey. Yeah, some weeks so they didn't really let me do it right now because I didn't have a big meal and you have to eat, I believe, before you come here. So I'm gonna go get something to eat real quick. Cause I literally just had like a banana and they're like, no, nah, that's not gonna happen. But I had a big meal last night, so. But they were like, nah. But I don't be eating like that in the morning. I get like sick. But I'm gonna go to Subway real quick or something. Hey y'all, I had some Subway and it was pretty bomb. I think I actually needed that. And I'm gonna head back. Done it this plasma. Dude, I'm freaking scared. The more I get closer to the place, I'm like, oh. Oh well. They already like um took my social and my ID because I guess they gotta match it up. Uh, I understand the purpose of the uh, plas plasma ferius uh, to obtain blood plasma without depriving me of red blood cells. In addition to receiving information about the beginning instructions on the plasmasis process in this content, consent agreement, I have also received information about. Okay. <laughs> now, I'm going to explain some of this paperwork. Do I'm going to have you fill out this whole first page. Make sure you read question five and six carefully because it's a two part question, okay? okay? Then on the back page, you're going to answer all the questions except for number nine. It's going to be for females only, so males will mark the NA box, okay? And then if you do take medicine, make sure you put the name of the medicine on the lines, okay? Now, on this box, you're only going to mark one box for a race you identify with, and there's a two or more to climb if you'd like. And then on these two, you're going to leave those blank. Okay. So everything with an X by it, just uh, don't do anything to it because it'll be for us. Okay? Okay. You're going to fill out this whole section one box. Make sure you put the month and year you moved into the current address that you left. Okay? The, second, the section two box, leave blank. And then the back page, you're going to leave blank. Now, so do you have um, tattoos or piercings ever in your lifetime? Yeah, in my ears. Okay. So um, even if those holes are now closed, you're still going to list this on your body. So wherever your piercings are located, just draw the line out and put a P for piercing, okay? And then um, no tattoos though, right? No tattoos. So you'll just have P's on here. Then on this page, you're going to fill out your information one more time and then just check yes or no if you want to receive any promotional emails or text messages from us. No, okay. Um, what is the difference between plasma and don donating plasma and donating um, blood? So the difference is that donating plasma does take a little bit longer process because once you get um, onto the bed, or they're going to put the needle in the arm, and then the machine is going to pull your whole blood. It's going to um, put it into a bowl and spin it. So the spin the the bowl is going to separate it pretty much from plasma, which is like the watery protein portion of your red blood cell. So we're going to take that part of it and collect it, but your red blood cell is still going to be in the bowl, and then we're going to give you back your red blood cells. So we're not.
not taking all of your blood, we're only taking that, that watery protein portion of it. Okay. Uh, so that is why the process takes a little longer, which is why you get uh, compensated, you know, for coming up your time. Because with whole blood, that all that's voluntary usually, yeah. and so you don't usually get paid for donating your blood cells. Uh, but that's faster because they just take from you and then you can, you're good to go. But this process is a little slower because it has to spin it, separate it, give it back to you, and then it, it does it again until you get the whole collection. How long does it take to rejuvenate the, so for, the plasma? So for plasma, it only takes about 24 to 48 hours for your body to, re to replenish your plasma. So that's why you can donate two times in a, in a week, and you only have to have one day in between your donations. So you could donate like Wednesday and Friday and still be fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because uh, <coughs> yeah. we give your red blood cells back to you, so your body's able to like... How are they, how is the plasma used and uh... So what we do is we'll take it into a bottle and then what we'll, we'll do, we'll freeze it and then we ship it to another laboratory, a bigger laboratory, and they're gonna like break it down. They're gonna fraction out your proteins into all the five different types. And then they're gonna dehydrate your proteins and they're gonna be able to make it into like capsules and medicine for people who have like bleeding disorders, autoimmune diseases, um, the alpha-1 antitrypsin syndrome, which is a respiratory disease. So that's what they do. They'll like dry it all out in the process and then put it into medicine like tablets and capsules. Oh, wow. And, and okay. okay. Interesting. Uh, okay. Good question. Uh, you're going to have questions and stuff that will ask you things like that. So um, usually if you, if you have had that type of history, um, it puts you into a high risk group. Um, and it's only because it puts you at higher risk of contracting like HIV and things like that. So if you do have that history, um, it's better to let us know now because you can't donate if you have that type of history. But can anybody get HIV also? Huh? Anybody can get HIV also if you're male or female. That's true. It is true. But in in that um, with male to male, it puts you in a higher risk category because it's more likely that you'll contract HIV because of the trauma that can happen because you're more likely to come in contact with blood during sexual intercourse than uh, males versus females. But <clears throat> I mean, it's still possible to contract it that uh, the opposite way as well. It just doesn't. Um, that one isn't put into like a high risk group so they don't they don't like the federal um the fda because we're regulated by the fda so everything like all the questions that are asked um in all of our systems and stuff is all approved and, and accredited to the fda and they're the ones who make our like policies and procedures and what's what's um okay accepted to go through and what's not accepted so if that is the case with your history then you wouldn't be able to donate any plasma so it's better it's better that you let me know now because then we can stop you in the procedure instead of having you go through the whole process and then not finding out until the physical. So um, with that type of history, you can't donate, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it is interesting. There's some stuff too that I even go home and look up because I want to know why. Okay. Uh, but even with blood, you can't get blood either. 
I don't believe so. Because I, I, be, I believe the like red blood cells, I think they're also regulated by FDA too. Okay. So they might have similar the similar questions and things that we do. Okay. 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 Right. I'm sorry, honey. Let me get you your, um, I have your ID and social up front. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I don't even know how to say this. Um, I don't know if you guys could see me. But I actually couldn't donate plasma. They said that um, I have high risk of HIV and infection, so I wasn't. Um, if I'm living that lifestyle, I can't. I I wasn't able to donate because of that. I can't donate because um, that lifestyle and. Um, I can donate blood, I believe, also. So, um, I couldn't do it. So, I'm sorry. I was really looking forward to donating, um, saving other people's lives, but apparently I um, am infected because I'm bisexual and it um, makes me really sad. Um, she, was, she was nice. She was really nice. She just said that it's I, and I recorded the whole thing. I don't know if you guys will be able to listen to her, but uh, she took me into the back and she explained to me and she stopped me in the process because I believe I had to watch a video or something like that. But I couldn't do none of that anymore because of what I told her. Because I wanted to be up front because I was reading the paper. Because she gave me a book, like, not a paper, uh, well, yeah, a, a handout. And I had to read the handout because it was going to be a test after. And um, in the handout, it said that uh, males, I, I recorded too, so you guys can see it, that males can't have um, sex with other males. And if a female also had sex with a male that had sex with another male, he could, she couldn't donate. So um, I was telling the lady, I was like, well, can't females also be in high risk? Because heterosexual people also you know they can get HIV too and and AIDS and everything and all that and she was like yeah but you know by males that have sex with other males are more in high risk and I was like oh okay so she said it's the FDA that is handling all that um, that writes all those laws down so it's them I don't know it makes me feel really sad that we're still in this, that we're still, you know, the LGBT is still fighting. So we're still fighting for um, our rights. You know, if you guys thought discrimination was over um, sexually or physically by race or gender, it's not really over. I think we have gotten very far, but um, not as far as um, we can donate blood and stuff like that. So we're still fighting y'all. And um, I'm a living testament by being here. And I'm glad that I recorded that. So if anybody um, is watching this and you been through the same thing, just know you're not alone. And um, it does feel sad and shitty. So um, I don't even know what to say. It makes you feel really um, emotional, actually. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to cry. But um, hopefully this yeah. video goes viral or something and, you know, shines a light on the people that don't know all the pedestrians <laughs> that don't know that this is real, that you really can't. Be, you really can't donate blood or plasma if you're um, if you're a male, especially if you're a male, if you're homosexual or bisexual.